Welcome back to The Edge. Does your WordPress site use a header footer plugin? Eh, you better see if this one just got compromised. Universal Analytics still on schedule to shut down July 1st, but data is going to be there for another year. Pinterest and Amazon are partnering with ads. You got to check this out. This is going to be pretty cool. And a volatility discussion today about the April 2023 Google Reviews update. You're listening to news from The Edge for the week of May 1st, 2023 here on Wait for it. Edge of the Web Radio. From the Edge of the Web Studios, here's what we're looking at this week. We're just going to stare at it. We're just going to look at it. Right? We won't discuss it. What? We will just look at it. We could all look at it, and everyone listening could just make it up for themselves. They can, they can look at it as you, well. You guys decide this week. Yeah. Hey. There we go. How long are you talking? I'm out. Oh, the, <laughs> the intro is like, here's what we're looking at this way. I mean, we're looking at it. It was like, a, it's so kind of like, here's like Johnny Carson. Yeah, yeah, we got to do that. Paul Dixon's our deep voice guy. Fantastic. Hey yeah, he's been with us for 10 years, almost 10 years. Dude's awesome. He does, he does all of the movie, not all of them, but the movie trailers. He has that career path, and it's fantastic. They don't do movie trailers like that anymore. In a world. Yeah, they do. Right. In a world of unlimited destructional power. One man. See? They do that. They do it all the time. I guarantee if you looked at trailers right now, you'd be able to pick up a, like five deep voice. They don't, they don't do the talk over anymore. They just like show clips. Yeah, he's probably, yeah, I think he's right there. Anyway, hey, by the way, if you are new to this show, this is a digital marketing show. We don't really talk about movies, but yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we, we talk about a lot of things here. But we cover SEO and digital marketing here separate from our interview series of, of digital marketers to make sure we are getting as much news about what's happening in the digital marketing space as quickly as possible. So check out edgeoftheweb.radio.com. That's edgeoftheweb.radio.com. The title sponsor of the show is Site Strategics. Our own firm, proud to have Site Strategics as a sponsor of this week's Edge of the Web News. Very proud of the team here. We focus on results-based SEO and results-based marketing, which should, should be really the only focus that you have. If you're doing marketing and it's not bearing results, then we got a problem here. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about what we do, but uh, proud to have them on the show, have us on the show, sponsoring the show. A little bit of inception there. On the line, we've got all the way. When you sponsor, do you just take money from one pocket and literally put it into the other pocket? I, I really do, and I also send stats to myself as well. Hey, okay. look at this. It's a fantastic stat here. And then you reply to yourself. And then I reply to myself. Wow, that is really nice. Can it's you, amazing. Can you go deeper into that for me? We have some great relationships. You give emails, right? Like, uh, thank you for sponsoring Site Strategics. Well, you're welcome. We value you. And, uh, and that's, Love Aaron. Yeah, we have evil Aaron out there as well, right? So it goes back and forth. Does evil Aaron have no facial hair? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or may, Oh, gosh, maybe I'm evil Aaron. All right, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> Normally, yeah, the good e Kirk or bad Kirk. Right? Evil twins are typically goatee, but normally that's when the other guy had Wait, no facial hair. Right? I, I just want to see you start punching yourself in the face now, like good Kirk, <laughs> bad Kirk. As long as we have the Kirk <laughs> wrestling music. <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, who's on the line? We got Morty Oberstein. He's the head of SEO branding over at Wix. Morty, how you doing, sir? Good. I'm using my InLinks pen. Ooh, and it's completely, can't see it, no, so completely yeah. blue. So Zoom won't yeah. let us see okay. it. Nope. But right. there you go. Put right in front of your shirt. There you go. Inlinks oh, pen. Right. Did you, did you get that from Brighton? SEO? I got it from Brighton. We're proud to have Inlinks as a uh, sponsor of Edge of the Web News. Um, and they do a bunch of good stuff. Do you know that Entity SEO is uh, <laughs> it's a really thing. important? It's very yeah. important. So you saw a number of good vendors out there. Uh, Dixon Jones and then Links are a great team over there. Uh, who else did you see uh, on the vendor floor? Oh, uh, Wix was there. Yeah, you they were so? wonderful. They were really good people. <laughs> see, I'm seeing the cycle here. Anybody else? SE Ranking uh, was over there. SE Ranking was there. They, they were wondering. SE Ranking was there. Um, HRFs was there. Right. Patrick Stocks is a booby. He's a, such a lovely fellow. Encro was there. Bright Local. Yeah. Got a yep. sweatshirt from them. That was good. It really, uh, um, you measure the uh, yes, yeah, uh, Screaming swag. Frog. If you're listening from Screaming, I got to tweet that out. They have wonderful hats, Ooh. love their hat. Hey, did you know high you, quality, gorgeous hat? Did you really? Know I got uh, the entire team here a Screaming Frog sweatshirt. 
I didn't get a sweatshirt. I was a little bit Hoodies. disappointed. Oh, I got they, a t-shirt. I don't think they give them out. Hoodies. Hoodies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, it those look good. They had a uh, rally for uh, charity, and we were able to bid and got some cool sweatshirts or oh. hoodies. Yeah, it was fun. And they're really, really nice, too. All right. Yeah, so that has right. nothing to do with what the, in- the <laughs> listeners are actually yeah, interested say, in. Right? Remember that time you said that we talk about news and not other stuff? Yeah, we ha- <laughs> haven't yet. First article on deck from Search Engine Journal. Alert, alert. We've got another vulnerability in WordPress. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> it hits a million plus users using header and footer plugin. Now, this is a uh, code inserting tool that is called WP code. It inserts particular code into headers or footers of a WordPress render. The vulnerability was discovered in the WordPress plugin is the second one found so far this year. This year. We're now in May. So it's only been four months. That's tough. Cross-site request forgery CS. RF vulnerability is what was being exploited there. And more than a million active installations are affected on the WordPress platform. So basically this CSRF could inject code or could actually manipulate a user to be able to reveal information that could take them towards revealing transactional information. But if you're an admin and you fall prey to this via social engineering, like a link sent to you via email or what have you, you could actually... If you're in and logged in at that moment in time, you could very well compromise the entire site, says a number of different reports from different agencies. There is a common weakness enumeration website that actually points that out. But there's also the National Vulnerability Database that also published this. So WP Code responded. There is an update. Go take care of that right now, folks, as you're listening. Make sure that you update your plugin to be able to have that patch because it is a security hole and great for them for reacting so quickly. But it's also good to be able to have this type of, I mean, this four entities that were referenced in this article from Roger Monty. And it's great to be able to have that type of oversight inside of content management systems. And now I give the mic to Morty. You're a bit biased because you're the head of yeah. SEO branding over at Wix, but just running content management system. And Wix is a closed environment, right? But at right. the same time, you're constantly battling scenarios as well. You're just not battling the plugin side of it. You don't have those type of it's, integrations, right? Do you want my, my mature, honest opinion about these sort of things? It's probably going to be the first time ever, but go ahead. I actually, like, I'll, I'll spill the tea. I actually talk about this a lot. I, I advocate this for this idea a lot internally. The idea of a best CMS, I think, is nonsensical. I think there's opportunity. It's like saying, yeah, which is the best car? I don't know. Like, right. Ford is, well, not Ford. That's not really a good car. Uh, a Toyota is a good car. Mm-hmm. And so is a Maserati. And so is a Honda. And Everybody so has their Acura. preferences, right. And on it's top of the preferences, benefits, the it's benefits also, benefits. it's opportunity cost. Like, I'll give you a, the classic example I hear a lot about, like, oh, you can't access the server with Wix. And, like, Wix will answer back, well, yeah, well, you know, we don't have any plugin vulnerabilities. It's all a trade-off of what you actually, like, need and what you want and what works for the client and opportunity cost and that sort of thing. Like, right. saying, like, well, I have complete customability of the server is not a good in and of itself. Like for example, I mean, most of the time, most people don't need that. They'll lock themselves out of it. And what are you going to get out of it? You also like when Amazon servers went down, so Wix uses an optimized CDN. So we automatically moved mm-hmm. sites off of the Amazon servers because we mm-hmm. use Amazon to different servers. So you weren't down. So there's always opportunity costs. And like the idea of like this CMS is better or is the best is a little bit I think a very old school, narrow minded yeah, way rud- of looking at the conversation. It's rudimentary because. Yeah, it really, it's like, it's much more nuanced. It's what's the opportunity cost. Like we talk to agencies all the time and there's no way, I, I don't think most good agencies, let's say, are not using, we only do X. We're only using Magento. Right. We're only using Weebly or we're only using Wix. Like. It's usually we have some Wix sites, we have some WordPress sites, we have some Shopify sites, Mm -hmm. and there's different opportunity costs that we get out of using different platforms for different things. I will, you know, how do I say this without like putting my foot in my mouth? Well, before you do that, I mean, security is obviously one of the most important things. It's huge because it's huge. So that's a huge, that's a huge plus. A brute force attack on the back end of an admin system, right? Can go down and you have to have those priorities, whatever the preference is of the CMS are, right? But that's what I mean, like, because we have control over the platform. Mm-hmm. 
so we can protect it. That's a plus. You know, there, well, I guess certain... what I'm saying is that there are some preferences, but there are some integral needs that supersede those particular preferences. You know, yeah, I, I that... think again, trying to be neutral and trying to yeah. have a mature conversation about us. I think like there's certain things that like are must, certain like thresholds, like. Right. From a let's say from a pure SEO point of view, right? I, I can't edit the title tag. Okay, like that's that's a major problem. Right. Exactly. Right? If if your CMS doesn't let you edit your title tag, that's a problem. I think once you hit certain thresholds, like the platform is good for SEO, the platform is secure, the platform is reliable, all of those things. So now there's trade offs in how you work. You know, like um. One person I was talking to, or the folks over at um, Optic Solutions in the UK, mm -hmm. like, yeah, we like building on Wix sites because it frees up our devs time. We can do all the SEO stuff. We don't feel we have to sacrifice anything. We also don't need the devs for X, Y, and Z tasks. So we can have the devs focus on the bespoke solutions that we have clients for. So, like, it's all one story. It's all one thing. It's all give and take. And I think, like, looking at, like, this is good, that's bad is very... It's very, elementary. Yeah, it's very basic and yeah, rudimentary. You're absolutely right. But That's even WordPress, right? The organization owned by Automatic. Automatic with the two Ts. They actually ran a proof of concept workflow of how that was actually owned. So, I mean, they're taking the initiative to be able to actually review these plugins and then be able to demonstrate this as well. So they are it's trying a, their it's best a, regularly to be able to defend against. It's them. a problem. I, if you want my honest opinion, I think the web is moving away from that open source environment. Yeah, that kind of construct. I think like the closed environment, I don't mean just like, I, I mean, in general, like you see like what happened with like Twitter versus like um, Mastodon, like that was a mess. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I agree. The web is moving to the point where the closed environments have sort of caught up to the ingenuity of the open source scenario. Yep. And it makes the web more accessible. And the web is moving to a certain direction where I think it's a little bit more efficient for a lot of people. I would That's agree. my personal opinion. Absolutely. Biased, but personal. <laughs> An opinion. It is an opinion. But it's a good one. Absolutely. Kudos for that. Mary Mallis just wrote about this on the Wix SEO Hub, actually. So it's her opinion, too. Oh, what a gratuitous plug. Fantastic. You know, it's also... Oh, you, a, oh, you, oh, you are, are you saying... Wait, are you saying I should not plug Mary Mallis? No, 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 no. Just the SEO Hub. I mean, because... Oh, I'm sorry. So I should <laughs> plug Miriam, but not her content. No. Oh, what are you saying? Oh, my gosh. I, I, this, is, this is what we call Jewish guilt, and now you are. <laughs> you know, you would be guilty if you didn't give us a call over at Site Strategics today, because we are actually in the agile digital marketing mindset. <laughs> we work on conversion rate optimization. We work on omni-channel broadcasts as well as technical SEO and the like. We also build websites on platforms, including Wix, including WordPress. So if you're interested in what we can do for you, and on top of that, go check out the Wix SEO hub because it's pretty cool. But if you're interested in what we can do for you, just go over to sitestrategics.com, S-I-T-E strategics.com, or just give us a call at 877-736-4932. Had to jump in there because we owed it to our title sponsor, right? That's what's up. That's what's up. You know what's also what's up? up? Well, so I'm about to be down here <laughs> very soon from Nicole Farley over at Search Engine Land. Google's UA historical data will be available until July 2024. But uh, obviously, if you haven't heard this before, your Universal Analytics platform will stop recording data on July 1st, 2023. And that's coming up pretty darn soon. If you haven't heard this before, it's panic time. <laughs> oh okay? <my> you <laughs> need to get someone to help you can, very can I, quickly. Can I tell you, if you have heard this before, it's panic, panic time. time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Krista Seiden jumped in there and she tweeted that Google Analytics has finally put a date of the loss of historical data for free customers. You will stop collecting data in Universal Analytics as of July 1st, 2023. So... We actually uh, knew about that for a bit here. It's reaffirming that it's coming at you. And if you don't have a migration plan, you need to stop this podcast right now and go talk to someone to be able to get this thing going because you got to get a tag in the system. It's very easy. In fact, there's also a relationship between UA and Google Analytics 4 that you don't even have to, I think, you don't even have to change the code on the site to activate that because it can collect the UA data, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. We did so many so early on that that was never offered to us. So right. We don't, yeah. Right. But there is a migration tool. There's a conversion migration yep. tool as well that wasn't there whenever we started doing all this. 
So we've got our clients completely migrated over to GA4 running in tandem, but all things being equal. Now, if we only knew how to use a damn thing. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Like I'm waiting for a good comeback, but there is none. Nope. Oh, just nope. listening. <laughs> so, that said, oh. we're, we're going to have to uh, put some links in the uh, sheet there to be able to uh, let everybody know how to actually go about getting their analytics running. Mm -hmm. But that's coming at you guys, and we're about to lose UA. Uh, we should probably have like a uh, UA 3 clock. Uh, in the corner of the show, right? Wouldn't that be well, completely that be erroneous? <laughs> yeah, a little doomsday clock. A little doomsday I, clock. We should put together like a nice like montage, like I, farewell I, to UA. I think we should just go all in on this and start like, you know, like in the space sometimes people like thought leadership nonsense. Right. Right? Right. Like often. Okay. I think we should do that. Like we should go all in like create posts, like why analytics don't matter anymore. Five reasons why you don't need <laughs> analytics. You don't need to measure anything. It's all anything. been a ruse. What? Three reasons why gut feeling is more <laughs> important than anything. Yeah. What's your SEO gut say? <laughs> What's your SEO gut say? I feel like there's traffic on this website. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> I go there. Getting Everybody else should go there as well. <laughs> How much traffic is website, guess? Um, mm. think, mm, four <laughs> mm, million. <laughs> There you go. See? So, uh, yeah, I think we should actually put together some sort of farewell montage for, you know, almost like the beer commercial. Yeah. There we go. All right. It's like a little kid, like when they go to camp, like, don't leave me here with these people. <laughs> That's how I feel like. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's going to happen. All right. You know what's also happening? Pinterest and Amazon are teaming up for a multi-year ad <sighs> partnership. Pinterest just announced, this is from Search Engine Line with uh, Nicole Farley, Pinterest just announced a significant advertising partnership with Amazon. When Pinterest users actually encounter an Amazon ad, they will be directed to the Amazon's website to complete their purchase. All right, this is what was really needed. If you're in an Amazon space, if you're an Amazon merchant, right, if you're running an Amazon ad, the users are already primed. They already have everything locked and loaded to be able to make that transaction. What a great connection to be able to, uh, again, you know, giving Bezos and Amazon like 35 to 50% of your profit. But still, being able to have that transaction flow through Pinterest, what could go wrong there, right? So Morty's a big SEM or advertising proponent here. So what do you think about that connection right there? How often would you like your your Pinterest feed to go straight over to Amazon ads? What Pinterest feed? Also, I feel like when, when <laughs> AI creates content, the general consensus has been that it's going to have an enormous impact on the ecosystem. And the AI, are we supposed to be talking about other things <laughs> other than AI? See, there he goes. Yep. I was trying to avoid a show. I was trying to make a show. I haven't used I, I To be <laughs> fair, Crystal loves Pinterest. And she's used it very effectively for the SEO hub. Yeah, she has. For I haven't visual used library. Pinterest, yep. I feel like, since the 1990s. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't around in the 1990s. <laughs> that was your MySpace, right? Oh, my gosh. That's I was my, actually my... watching Iron Man, uh, first Iron Man, and Robert Danny Jr. was actually referring to throwing it up on your MySpace page. That's how old that series is. Nice. amazing. Wow. Is that really that old? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It is. The guy in the Jeep takes a selfie and goes, I don't want to see that on your MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's funny. It's that old. It's Dude, that we awesome. are old. Yes, you are. Because like, I felt I was old when that came out already. Like, I wasn't a kid when that came out. I, I was, was old. I was like 15 years old. When Iron Man came out? Anyway, check it out. If you're in the advertising space with Amazon, that's probably going to be the doorway for you to actually start up a Pinterest campaign as well. Because if you got that connection, you certainly have a transaction flow there that probably is bar none one of the better advertising vehicles inside of Pinterest. If you're still it actually does make a lot of sense. Like, legitimately speaking, it does make a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. It does. It absolutely does. You know what also makes perfect sense is working with InLinks. InLinks is a continued sponsor of Edge of the Web, and we're certainly proud to have them. Entities play an incredible role in search now. If you don't know what entities are, we're talking about the knowledge graph that Google actually understands about the world around us and how you represent your knowledge graph on your website. So InLinks can actually help you create entities 
schema-oriented, link-oriented subject matter that can actually help you unfurl your subject matter expertise and be able to let Google know how sharp you are in your respective service. So go over to edgeofthewebradio.com forward slash inlink. That's I-N-L-I-N-K-S today. And let them know that, hey, jump over there. You get a free account. And let them know that uh, The Edge sent you over there because they certainly would like to know that. And great pens. And great pens. Great pens. Let them know you'd like a pen, too. All right. Fourth article coming in from Barry Schwartz. Google's April 2023 reviews update was, this is actually a Barry Blast, isn't it? This is an early Barry Blast, before Barry Blast well, starts. So I see, you know, we go through this every week. You only relegate Barry to the blast. That's the only time we Barry's got allowed. four freaking articles from him. I mean, come on. Yeah, but he's like, yeah, like, yeah, like you know. Well, it's like, save the Barry crap for later. <laughs> the Barry crap is very important right here. Over at Search Engine Land, Google's April 2023 review updates was actually more volatile than the previous project review updates data providers such as SEMrush and Rank Ranger say. So volatility, if you don't know what that is, it's the choppiness of ranking and visibility during an algorithm change. And we've seen highs and lows. We've seen algorithm changes that have had little or no volatility. Well, we also know that we have updates and algorithm changes. We also have core updates. Core usually are a bit challenging of just knowing your bearings. You're kind of sailing on waters here and you got to see what has come through. But the product review update is on that seventh iteration. And what they did this last time was very interesting. It was not just about product reviews. It was about services and things outside of an actual transactional product. So there is more volatility because there's more of those things that are out there. So I know that you deep dive Morty in the data space and you certainly are consultant with SEMrush over there. What do we know about this update that Barry's sharing with us? What do you know about the update that you haven't shared with us? You didn't read the article? Article in the show notes. Give us a cliff note. Come on. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, I'll give you a little. Okay, so the reviews update seemingly was more an aggregate more powerful, volatile than the previous project review update. What's interesting though is like some of the peak volatility numbers. So, okay, there's two ways of measuring, well, there's multiple ways of measuring volatility. Two common ways is taking a look at the baseline, which is makes, by the way, like it's a little caveat, like it, it's always hard to be super accurate with this because the right. baseline could be different in both periods. But you take a look at the baseline before one update and the change in volatility post update or during the update. And then you take a look at the second update and take a look at the baseline, the period of calm before the update, mm-hmm. and you compare it to what's happening during the update. Now, the baselines can be different, and that can impact the numbers, but for the most part, the reviews update saw a greater change in volatility from the baseline than the previous product review update. However, mm-hmm. there's also levels of peak volatility. I mean, how high did it go? Just pure numbers, like pure volatility, however you, right, whatever right, score right. you use to measure it, right. how high was it? And in that measurement, some of the categories from the product reviews update, that one, the February product reviews update, mm-hmm. that one was more powerful and more volatile than the reviews update. Yeah. What was interesting to me was that also included categories like travel, which you would think would not be the case because travel is a newly added vertical. Exactly. That applies to the reviews update. Like think like um, pages that compare places to go on vacation or pages that compare airlines or pages that compare whatever to do with travel. Which bathing suit is best? I don't know. That would be a product. That would be a product. Right. So so it's widened its visibility on things. Right. But the peak volatility for the travel niche was higher during the product review update, not the review update. Huh. Which is interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that. Maybe it was intentionally not nearly as volatile because we talked about this before is that product review, we believe, was a incubation of its natural language processing focus to be able to understand nuance and niche on a particular front of natural language processing. I don't know if I just actually just did a circular argument there. Point being is that it's understanding more about what's different between AI speak and human speak. And it's understanding industries more and more of what is actually unique patterns of word choice inside those industries. 
as it applies to products. Now it's actually being moved into a higher level of review, and that's in the travel industry as well as other services. Still in review mindset, but it's learning more. It's growing up a little bit. So actually we got like a product review teenager. That, oh, maybe, maybe it's just a tween. It's a tween, right? Right. It could be that. There was, um, how did Glenn put it? Um, collateral damage. Okay. It could be like, you know, and a lot of these updates, Glenn has a whole post about this. Glenn Gabe, sorry, has a whole yeah. post about this where like you have collateral damage from an update. Like even though like this page or whatever it may is not part of the update, not targeted by the update, but there's just, you know, collateral damage from an update. His whole article, I recommend you read it. It could be that. Like it's hard to say. I didn't dive into like where the volatility was in both updates. So it could just be like, who the hell knows collateral damage you know, decoupling multiple algorithms happen. it could be for example like a lot of the volatility could have been a reversal from a previous update because sometimes mm -hmm. there's like overlap between these updates mm -hmm. hard to say have to look at the keyword and the domain level you gotta watch your own domain and don't take our words for it if you are in an environment where product reviews are important for your business go check out what's going on from a ranking standpoint but this are review site they are not specific product size. It's still in a review ecosystem, right? Yeah, but there's so much ancillary impact, right? Because let's say you're on a, it's like, you know, a best vacation spots and you're not a page that's reviewing anything. You're just saying like, oh, gotcha. Uh, Tahiti, yep. welcome to Tahiti, the best vacation spot. You're not reviewing crap, right? Right. But there are review pages on that SERP that can now usurp you. Ooh. So your rankings can't be impacted even though you're not technically part of that specific equation. Right. Gotcha. Very good. All right. Well, that was the beginning of the Barry Bonanza. Let's jump into a few more here from Search Engine Land by Barry Swartz. Number one is Google Search rewriting more titles again. Lily Ray actually let us know over the weekend, I believe, that she's seeing more and more titles in the first top 10 because we're still on now. We're no longer pages. There's an infinite scroll happening. She says, seems Google has re recently gotten much, much more aggressive with rewriting and shortening of the organic title link in the SERP. This includes many of its own pages. And Barry wrote on this, and it's, it's also been chimed in from a number of different individuals, that uh, people getting into legal trouble because of the changing yeah. of the titles on these SERPs. And uh, it's getting it wrong a lot of times. So... This rewriting that's for the Google users' engagement, there's got to be some sort of pushback tool to be able to flag an inappropriate or incorrect title rewrite. Eric Wu actually jumped in there and said he observed 70 of page one and 85% of top three results were rewritten. That title that you crafted as a user or your department, your legal department crafted as something that had to be in there as a title reference, that's all being rewritten by Google. All right, so Morty, yep. is there any silver lining here? What's no, up? yeah, silver lining. Yeah, so if you uh, Google SEO podcast, Google rewrites the title for the Surf's Up podcast as uh, best podcast <laughs> ever. Sir, definitely listen to this. Up. It's the most awesome SEO podcast ever. <laughs> so wow. I'm all for the rewrite. <laughs> Takes like three lines. Amazing. <laughs> all right, all right. So Google search update fixes some problematic site names. So not oh, well, that's where I was actually going with the other article. This article, it, it, literally, the site name is above your title, and those site <laughs> names are getting wrong. Let's Nothing check is right. Oh my Nothing gosh! Nothing is right on the search. Unbelievable. So uh, there's some errors. Glenn Gabe was actually jumping in on that, showing some errors, good news and bad news. But my gosh, some errors. For example, Salesforce, right? The site name was Salesforce, and then it was spelled incorrectly. So all one uh, word. It could have been worse. It could have been like Salesforce. Well, there's a that couple. That would have been bad. <laughs> there's a couple out there that I think there was a uh, legal firm out there that was called some sort of organ harvest uh, company or something. Oosh, not <laughs> I'm, good. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was, it, was, it was terrible. And the site names that we've just started to see that raise above the title link, right? You got to get that right. I mean, come on. Yeah, especially if there's a markup that, like, it's right there. It's right there. It's it, it's not it's going anywhere. This is the company name. All right. I last... always, like, find these things so interesting because, like, Google is something that can be so smart yep. and so advanced and so interesting and intricate and, and dynamic. And then, like, we're still talking about, like, not realizing Salesforce is one word. 
I like that. Then the other Google is actually running itself into the wall. Can't find the actual door, right? Right. Yeah. Give us our sites. Give us control of our site names. If you're doing yeah, that. Yeah, because that'll be great. Give SEOs control of things like the site name. Like, best <laughs> website ever. Click here. What could go wrong me. there? All right. Well, yeah, you what know could what? go wrong with that? Uh, last article from Barry over at Search and Roundtable. Many SEOs are worried about their jobs since generative AI and AI search features happening. We're not only able to use some generative AI tools to create excellent content, but how searchers access this information is on the verge of changing, he says. This has caused some concern and fear within the SEO industry. Laraz Poston posted a poll on Twitter asking SEOs, are you worried about your career in the next one to three years? The poll had 665 votes, which is a lot for a poll. And it seems like more SEOs were worried. So 57% of the respondees of the poll said that they are worried about their career in the one to three years here. So John Mueller actually chimed in, as long as machines that read websites, technical SEO will remain an important part of making the most out of a website. It's not going away, and as long as humans look at websites, performance and user experience is going to remain just as important. No amount of links replace these. So I just wanted oh to sum up this oh. show with your take on that. We've been talking about a lot. Yeah, I, I got through the entire show except for one article talking about AI, right? I was going to say, we finally got you an AI article. <laughs> yeah. Had to, Ooh. had to. All right. So yeah. we, I'm we, not sure because I'm always worried about everything, so like. I would have said yes to the poll because I just worry. <laughs> so you're you're oh, a shoe in oh. for that, all right? Yeah. Oh, I like I was a quick yes. Are you worried? I don't about what? It doesn't matter. Yes. Definitely worried. Absolutely. But the, I'm worried the, the John I'm, Mueller I'm, tweet. I'm worried about this answer. <laughs> the John Mueller tweet was part of a different conversation also. That was a, a in reply to Brittany Muller, mm -hmm. who was talking about you know the whole thing with the whole page experience ranking system being right. removed from the page blah 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 right so someone was saying well i guess you know technical seo is not really so important anymore which was like that's a take yeah that's um, a take right there <laughs> test it and page find out like, the entirety <laughs> of technical seo is summed up in page experience but okay test it and find um, out yeah go ahead let's try it yeah <laughs> so that was john saying like no yeah. in a nice way yeah, keep track. Just keep track of John Mueller as he changes his Twitter name or his handle. That is a work of art. It honestly is. He is continually, he's like the Borg. He's constantly changing that. Oh, we did do a Lucretius of Borg AI generative on John Mueller, and it was weird. Yeah, well, I tried it and it didn't come out right. Didn't come did out you right get it? I don't know. Oh, it's no, weird, it, right? it, it got weirder and weirder. Almost the AI is not there yet. That's how we'll know it's here. <laughs> as soon as we see. John Mueller as as and, and the to, board yeah, as tied as together. Able to handle, yeah, <laughs> I'm on it. We'll know. All right. So in the meantime, every Thursday, you should jump on to hashtag SEO chat every Thursday That's at 1 right. p.m. What's happening? What's going on? What is hashtag SEO chat? I don't know. Hmm. Why the heck are we talking about it? No, what's that? It's That's a weird. thing. Weird. And people weird. and actually SEOs all it's get around. It's a Twitter chat. There we go. Wow. So you type in the hashtag, mm -hmm. hashtag SEO chat. You click latest <laughs> on your feed and you click refresh and you can see the latest tweets for the hashtag. You have a conversation. This week's conversation is from Ulrika and we're talking about JavaScript SEO. So that's fun if you like JavaScript SEO. It's a whole technical SEO. Although thing, technical right? SEO is not a thing anymore anyway, yeah. right? So <laughs> Probably need to lead with that. <laughs> yeah. Let's just talk about links. No, we're talking about JavaScript SEO, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitter this Thursday. So please join us. Please join us. And I say that, and I'm never there, and I'm very sorry. But maybe no, I, you're I, not. I, I am. I, 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 I need to jump in. I do care. But you always say, oh, I need to jump in. I need to, I got I to gotta jump in. got to do it. You know, and you don't show up. Well, I show up whenever you're not there. I'm not really here anyway. <laughs> more Thank does the, this is AI, Morty. All right. So thank you so much, sir. Anything else that you want to pipe our direction to uh, our listeners? Have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you. And please don't worry. It'll be fine. Or not. It'll all go wrong and <laughs> you should worry. No, seriously, don't worry. It's not good for your mental health. It really isn't. All right. Thank you, sir. It's all going to be okay. News out. Don't worry. <laughs> this don't is worry. 
Don't worry. Banter. Yeah. Oh, my banter. Hey, check out uh, our second episode of Arij Abu Ali's interview here on The Edge uh, this week. Check out the previous one as well because it was pretty good. From all of us over at Edge, thanks so much for listening. And uh, rate this podcast if you would over at ratethispodcast.com forward slash edge. Give us a review because that's how we get the algorithm in our favor. And, uh, you know, from all of us over at Edge, including Morty, stay safe. Stay I'm well. part of Edge? Yeah, you're part of Edge. Don't worry. Nice. Yeah, don't all be, right. Yeah, there you go. And don't be a piece of cyber driftwood. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. <laughs> Why did I say?